Get up, we're going. Where? Save the world. Oh, is that all? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome, good to see you. If you have been here before, welcome back, good to see you. Uh, today we're talking about probably one of my favorite things that I've come across, my Netflix queue. Uh, I actually did want to do a review, I did want to do a review rather, uh, when this originally came out. I believe 2019 now, I don't even recall. Um, but I was so in love, or was it 2018? I don't, it doesn't matter. I was so in love with this series. I uh, was inspired to read the comics, which I did. Um, and I just was really excited for season two, which is upcoming, thankfully, at the end of July, uh, that I wanted to rewatch the series. And I rediscovered my love for it. And I was like, why did I not make a review for this back when it came out. And honestly, I don't know why. So why not just talk about it now before season two comes out? And today, of course, in case you are unfamiliar by the title of this video, we're talking about The Umbrella Academy. Now this one was originally written or at least co-written and whatnot, created rather, by Gerard Way, which was the singer of My Chemical Romance. Now, this was a series that honestly, basically, calls to every single nerd piece of me. It has just about everything. Uh, weird sort of sci-fi time travel stuff, uh, a ragtag group, very much X-Men style with different kind of abilities, uh, just this shrouded in mystery type of story uh, that I just couldn't pull myself away from. And it, like I said, it calls to every single piece of nerd within me that I absolutely love. Essentially, this is about a group of people uh, which were originally born under very strange circumstances. They were all born on the same exact day uh, under these very strange circumstances. A gentleman by the name of Hargreaves decides to try and gather as many of these children as possible, of which he gets seven. Now of these seven, he kind of creates a little superhero group of his own that he deems the Umbrella Academy. Uh, they are essentially superheroes, they grow up, they kind of disband through various means. Um, it does take some differences from the comic, but I think they do it in a very good way, in which it keeps it very interesting and very fresh. So I did like that a lot. I think I like the series more than the comic, but again, they're two, two totally different entities. It's kind of hard to say, oh, this one is so comic accurate. Yes, it does follow some things, but not nearly to the point where you're like, you can read the comic and know exactly what's about to happen in the series. They do some things differently. I don't know because of the way the comic is written, it just isn't possible. But this one is so much more fun, I feel like, than the actual comic. But essentially, it's uh, seven people, all with different abilities of different kinds. Um, and it's just such a great series. I, I can't tell you enough good things about it. Uh, there's a monkey named Pogo that's kind of like their, not sidekick, but sort of like grandfatherly character after their dad dies. Um, Oh, by the way, their dad dies uh, in the very first episode. It's not really a spoiler. Um, and that's what kind of brings them all together after being separated for so many years, uh, is their father dying. And because it's kind of under mysterious circumstances that he dies, they kind of have to figure out what to do. Um, and then there's this big subplot. Well, it's actually more of the main plot of Five, one of the characters who disappeared when they were kids and comes back. And he was sort of like time traveling. He went to see the future. And there was uh, like an apocalypse. He couldn't get back. Um, he worked for this time agency for a while. It's really difficult to describe it. And it sounds like a homeless person's fever dream when I say it out loud. And of course, I'm not the best at describing this stuff. Um, i probably just look it up on IMDb and the two sentences make more sense than everything that I just said. But what's important and what brings you here is because I love this series. And I want to talk about this series. And all the great things that it has to offer. So the first thing, of course, about this series um, has to be the characters. The characters are what draws me in immediately. Um, I don't really identify with anyone in particular. Um, I did watch the series twice, so it's kind of difficult to say I identify with one in particular. I think everybody will always have their favorite. But for me, the first time I watched it, I was a big fan of Five and Klaus and Number One for some reason. Those were my top three. But on second viewing, Diego, number two, and Ben's storyline, number, I think Ben is six? I don't recall what number Ben is. Four? It might be four. Doesn't regret, no, Klaus is four. It doesn't matter. But those two characters were 
even more at the forefront for me. Um, there's a big sub sort of plot with number three and number seven, which is um, Ellen Page's character and a girl who can say that she heard a rumor and sort of get people to be not necessarily mind controlled, but they will do essentially whatever she wants after saying that particular phrase. There's a lot of interesting things happening in this series with all of the moving pieces. Uh, there's also the two characters that are after number five, uh, Cha-Cha and Hazel, that are from the same time assassins that number five worked for, they're more or less coming after him now. So there's a ton of different moving things and it's hard to describe, but the characters is what's gonna bring you into it. You may not identify with one, you may like one more than the other, um, but they're all going to be interesting in one way or another. There's not a single dull character, I think, in this entire series. You always know that something is going to happen with this character and it always pays off. There's never a moment where you feel like, well, this character felt a little bit flat. I mean, maybe minor, minor characters had that happen, but for the most part, every single character in this is interesting. Even the mom who's, an, who's a robot um, to the waitress lady that uh, Hazel falls in love with, or is it Cha-Cha? I think it's Hazel. That Hazel falls in love with. Those characters are, you know, pretty normal for the most part, but there's still something kind of interesting about them, uh, such as the waitress wanting to get out of her diner and go sort of explore birds. Um, and there's just so many interesting characters that I absolutely loved. That's what drew me in. And then the biggest second thing is that story. The storyline of time travel, sort of time assassins, if you will, the apocalypse that's coming, how these characters have to band together and come together. All of it is just absolutely amazing. It's about, I think it's 10 episodes, about an hour each, which is usually the Netflix format, but it's highly worth it. You can binge it in a weekend and it's amazing. But Umbrella Academy, I highly recommend. That one is the one that I would say watch right now because season two is upcoming, I believe at the end of July. And if you know anything that happens at the end of season number one, it is a big WTF and you are gonna want to jump right into season number two. So now is the time, if you have not seen Umbrella Academy season one, jump on that now. Maybe gives you a little bit of time. You can read the comics just to be a little bit more familiar. And then that will lead you into season two at the end of July, which I am pumped for because there are so many questions I need to have, sort of have answered that I can't wait to find out where the Hargreaves are, what they're up to, uh, when they are, if you know what I'm talking about, and a lot of other interesting things. So I will definitely be doing a review on time when that one actually comes out in later July. Um, but if you have seen Umbrella Academy season two, let me know your, th or season one rather, sorry. If you haven't seen season two yet, if you've seen season two, you're watching this in the future, in which case, is it amazing? I hope so. Um, if you've seen Umbrella Academy season one, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below. Also, let me know which one's your favorite character. I would love to find out. Also, while you're down there, make sure you leave a thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button as I am doing a giveaway trying to get to 300 subscribers, but I need your help to get there. Make sure you share this with your friends, hit that subscribe button, hit it as many times as you possibly can, even though only one counts. And uh, let's get there because I'm doing a giveaway for a website to give you a gift card where you can purchase digital online movies. Leave the giveaway and the uh, uh, website information rather uh, in the comments, or not in the comments, what am I talking about? <laughs> I'm on too much caffeine, I've been talking too long. I'm going to be leaving the videos, both the giveaway and the video talking about the website that I'm giving it away, the gift card for in the corner up there. So make sure you click on both of those and check those ones out. But other than that, those are really my thoughts on Umbrella Academy season number one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next one.